Hey guys, what's up? John here from FlyMikeAlpha.com. Here today with Stephanie, we're going to go ahead and show you how to fly into a Class D airport. So into Punta Gorda, Florida, KPGD, we're going to walk you through all the radio communications and all the procedures you need to do when you're approaching the airport and landing at the airport. Cue the cheesy intro music. So our first step here is to go ahead and get our ATIS. So we look at our sectional chart, we find the ATIS frequency, and we go ahead and tune that in. 648 Zulu weather. Wind 010 at 7. Visibility 10. Sky clear. Temperature 16. Dew point 4. Altimeter 3015. Visual approach, runway 4 in use. Advise on initial contact, you have Sierra. Tower information, Sierra, time 1648, Zulu weather. Wind 010 at 7, visibility 10, sky clear. Temperature 16, dew point 4, altimeter 3015. Visual approach, runway 33, that is available. Uh, the All right, so we got our ATIS now. Our ATIS is information Sierra. It was recorded at 1648 Zulu. So we checked that, and it looks to be oh, about 30 minutes old or so. So the weather's a little bit old, not a big deal. And we got information Sierra, winds are 010 at 7, 10 statute miles of visibility. It is clear, sky is clear. Temperature 162.4, 3015 on the meter. We'll go ahead and check our altimeter. It is set to 3015 already, perfect. And they are landing and departing runway 4. So as we're flying along here, we know they're using a runway 4. So runway 4 is going to be oriented when we look at our DG to our left. So we're actually really on a long left base for runway 4 already. We can also just pull up our airport diagram, look at it, visualize where we're coming in from, and see that, yes, we obviously are on a long left base for runway 4. So they'll probably tell us to join the pattern on a left base for runway 4 and report that. So now that we've got our ATIS, We've checked our airport diagram. We know what we're expecting from them. We are at 2,000 feet. We're about 14 miles north of the field, and we've got the tower frequency dialed up. We'll go ahead and try to make contact with them somewhere between 10 and 15 miles out. Uh, you could make contact with them as short as four miles out because that's their airspace, four miles, but I like to give them a good heads up. So somewhere between 10 and 15 miles, I like to call them. We're at 14 miles now, so I'll let Stephanie go ahead and call up Punta Gorda Tower. Let them know we have information, Sierra, and we are inbound for landing. Punta Gorda Tower, Cessna 8786 Echo, 12 miles north, inbound with Sierra. And uh, calling uh, Punta Gorda Tower, say again, your call sign, 86 Echo. Warrior 8786 Echo. Warrior 8786 Echo. Warrior 86 Echo, ID for me. And we'll hit the ident button right there in our transponder, get a solid light, so it's sending... 8 November 86 Echo, ident observed about 10 miles northwest of the field, report a 3 mile left base for runway 4. 3 mile left base, runway 4, 86 Echo. Cool, so we'll report a 3 mile left base for runway 4, so we read that back to him, November report a 3 mile Whiskey, Romeo, runway left base for runway 4. Wind, three, so six, once we're established on the 3 mile left base, we can start our descent sooner than that. And we'll leave 2,000 feet once we cross the river here, so we're not getting low over the water. And then we'll report the three mile left base, and now we'll queue them up to give us our landing clearance. So on your initial call up, if you're wondering what to say, your initial call up always has those four W's in it. Who you yeah, are. 86 Echo, what's your landing intentions? Landing, full stop. 86 Echo, full stop. Here. So those four W's that are in there. Who you're calling, who you are, where you are, and what you want to do. So, who we are calling, Punta Gorda Tower, who we are, Warrior 8786 Echo, where we are. We were about 12 miles northwest when we first called up. And what we want to do, we want to land with Information Sierra. We give them those four W's, and then they come back with further instructions, and you simply repeat back what they say. And it's just a conversation between two people at that point. Whenever they say something you're not sure of it, you can always say, say again. You could say, I don't understand. And they'll find another way to explain it to you. You can always use and, student uh, pilot in your radio transmission. So when you first call up, you could always say something like Punta Gorda Tower, Warrior 8786 Echo, student pilot, 12 miles northwest, landing with Sierra. And they would go ahead and come back and speak probably a little slower and be more willing to explain things and be a little clearer about their instructions and what they're asking you to do. We'll start about a three to 500 foot per minute descent down now that we've crossed the river. And we can see our airport there just about Oh, 11 o'clock, and we can see runway 4 running to the east. It matches on our DG. Our DG still agrees with our compass, so we don't have to reset that. And we could go ahead and run through a descent checklist. If you pass me your checklist, I'll be a good co-pilot for you, and I'll run that. Okay. 
so we'll either have a descent or an approach checklist. Descent checklist, we'll plan. Four eight six echo cleared to land runway four, wind three three zero at eight. Eight six echo, clear land runway four. So we don't have to repeat back to the winds when they tell us that. And now that they've cleared us to land, we don't have to report a three mile left base anymore. That negates the reporting requirement since we are already cleared to land. They've given us instructions to go ahead and proceed all the way to the airport at this point. You could still report a three mile left base just to remind them you're out there if you wanted to, but it's not necessary. So our descent checklist, it tells us here to plan four nautical miles for thousand feet to lose. So we're about five miles from the airport now and we're descending, that's perfect. Mixture will adjust. It's already full of rich since we're below 3,000 density altitude. Throttle will stage according to this checklist or basically just simply reduce. Landing light will turn on since we're coming into the airport and we want people to be able to see us. Before landing, we'll go ahead and brief our approach. Our seatbelts will be secure. The fuel pump will be on. Fuel selector is already set to the fullest tank. Trims will be set. Mixture is full rich below 5,000 feet according to this checklist. It already is. Our flaps will be as required, and our V-REF with full flaps is 62 knots indicated airspeed, roughly about 70 or so, uh, just shy of 70 miles per hour. Now we'll be landing with flaps 25 today, just two notches of flaps, so we'll be approaching at about 80 miles an hour, down into ground effect, and then reducing power and letting the airplane settle on down to the ground. So our approach brief, simply, there's runway four. We'll be making the left four. We can probably reduce a little power here and start coming down a little quicker. Joe Charlie Golf has approved. We've got one airplane, one other airplane in the pattern there that we're aware of. And after landing here, we'll expect to make the first available left turn. We'll taxi back via Alpha and follow their instructions. Once we clear the runway, we'll talk to ground on 1955. And they'll give us instructions to taxi down Alpha and whatever other taxiways they want us to use to go over to the FBO. Sound good? Sounds good. Awesome. Any questions? Landing a 25 degree flap, is that what you said? Yep, that'll be two notches of flap. Roger. So we're in a good place here on our left base. We could go ahead and we got 1700 RPM set. That's awesome. We could go ahead and start trimming a little bit to slow the airplane down. We could turn our fuel pump on. And we can go do one notch of flaps to also bring in a little bit of drag. Flaps here. Just like you're used to in the 170. Uh-huh. One notch of flaps. Perfect. And trim. Helicopter Joe Charlie Golf, midfield downwind, runway 27. Now it's important if you're flying by yourself Charlie or you're flying as a student, you got a whole bunch of pile of paper on your lap. You want eight. to go ahead and get rid of that prior to land. You want to have Charlie full Golf. control movement of the control wheel, so you don't have anything obstructing your finals clear, and we're clear to land. We got a nice long runway, about 7,000 feet. So if we land just a little past our landing point, that's fine. We got our touchdown zone, the first 3,000 feet of the runway. How long is this runway? About 7,000 feet. Okay. I think we'll make it. I think so. Now, since we're flying VFR today, we want to be stabilized by 500 feet. So we're about 500 feet AGL right now. We're 500 foot per minute descent. We're nice and stable. We're slightly high, but that's okay. We're coming down onto glide slope. If we were flying IFR, we'd want to be stabilized by 1,000 feet. So what's unstable? Well, if you got four white lights, we've got three white and one red. If you are sinking at maybe 1,000 feet a minute or 800 feet a minute, that wouldn't quite be stable. But anything within 500 feet a minute and relatively on glide path is a pretty stabilized approach. You're lined up with the runway. You're not directly, uh, you're not off-centered, left or right. So we'll simply just look all the way down the runway there. November 2 2 zero, Looking at the King. end Don't take and your fly right on down. You are cleared, touch and go. We're right runway, on glide path now. Uh, two four, white, two red. Five zero at eight, and you're inside Mooney traffic on a six mile, four, five mile file. Just keep looking down that runway. Two two zero. did you copy that? Two two zero. Start to reduce power. November 6th, November 7th, November 7th, continue clear, your much, follow on Cessna much. traffic holder, just holder, inside of 70 holder, right here, over 75 on the left idle. base for the touch and go. Excellent. Negative contact. A little bit of brakes, a little bit of left aileron down. So November 2 2 0, you are coming okay. in broken, sir. Say again. A little bit of brakes, so we'll make yeah, Charlie. Do yeah, a little yeah, more left aileron, finish off that crosswind landing with a full deflection to the left. All right, that was loud and clear. You cleared touch and go. Runway 4, wind 360 at 7. Go, runway 4. Here we go. And we'll come off here at Charlie. Contact ground 119 or 55. Locked. 86 Echo, contact ground 119 or 55. 86 Echo, going to ground. All right, who else is calling? All right, tower? we'll stop here. We'll do our after-landing checklist. We'll go over to ground 119 or 55. 
Zero Charlie Golf, uh, say I'll run your after landing checklist for you. 700 feet on the downwind, runway 27. Fuel pump. Uh, I'm not awesome. Zero Charlie Golf, uh, you're, you're clear. And landing right to, off. Touch and go for runway Make sure 27, wind variable at 5. And throttle, you could bump up just a hair there to about 1,000. Uh, clear for touch and go. We'll get a hold of ground here on 1955. November 567, Juliet November, the Cessna's over the numbers. He's no factor cleared to land, runway 4, wind variable at 5. Land 4, 7, Juliet November. No carb heat since we're in Florida. Yep. Carb heat, since we have a nice great big green arc there, we only have to use it when it's outside the green arc, and it's pretty much the whole range. So we got 1955 dialed up. You can tell them we're clear runway 4 at Charlie. Taxi to the FBO. Puna Gorda ground, 86 Echo, clear at Charlie. Taxi to the FBO. Number 86 Echo, say again. 86 Echo is clear at Charlie. We'd like to taxi to the FBO. Number 86 Echo, FBO, taxi via Charlie, cross 15, Delta. Charlie, cross 15, Delta, 86 Echo. Awesome. So we'll go ahead. We have our taxi diagram pulled up here on our iPad. Okay. So we'll use that taxi diagram. We're going to go straight ahead here to cross. on Charlie, cross and run with 5, take Delta to the FBO. Roger. Ground allegiance, uh -huh. 1696, like to push out of gate 6. 1696, push back approved, runway 4. Alright, you're 16. And as you're taxing here, it's perfect landing practice. Just look all the way down that center line, put it right in the center of view, and that's exactly where you want the airplane when you're landing. For 1696, I'll leave the 1696. So that lands right in between the main gear. I got one aircraft going to be taxing behind you. Okay, hold position for allegiance, 1696. Now, as you're taxiing, it's a good idea to have this taxi diagram pulled up somewhere, either suction cup to the window or mounted on your yoke, on your cell phone, if it's small enough, on the panel. But you always want to have a taxi diagram out no matter where you're taxiing, whether it's an airport you're familiar with or an airport you're unfamiliar with, like this one. We're coming up here at... Number 86, if you could expedite your taxi until clear of the uh, commercial ramp there and have you. Who's that me? We'll expedite 86 Echo. We'll just keep going across here. A little faster is what he's asking for. On off skater, ready to continue. We're clear right, clear across, continue clear via left, clear across. Continue via Delta, off skater. And they just want us to expedite across the runway and expedite through Delta over to the FBO. Okay. They have Allegiant there. You can see his beacon on on that Airbus. And he's getting ready to push back. They just want us to get out of the way before they push. Now, if you're not comfortable taxiing super fast, you can always just tell him unable, and they'll give you holding instructions somewhere to let him get out first. We'll go ahead and make a left here on Delta. Delta into the grass. A little bit of break before we make that turn. 1696, push back approved, runway 4. Push back approved, please, 1696. Excellent. And the FBO ramp will be right off here to our right, as we can see on our taxi diagram. Thanks for watching the video, guys. If you have any questions at all, just leave them in the comments below. Make sure you check out our other Class D videos on how to go into and out of a Class D airport, proper radio phraseology, getting the ATIS, things like that, talking to ground control, everything you need to know about how to fly into and out of a Class D airport. Check out our Private Pilot Online Ground School and all our other online courses on our website, flyatmikealpha.com. Be sure to give us a thumbs up, like, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to check out our Patreon page. And as always, guys, if you can't fly every day, then fly at MikeAlpha.com. We will see you all next time.